Welcome everyone to the Embroidery Case Files. Where we answer the question, is commercial store-bought embroidery better than home embroidery? My name is Sue and this is Dawn and we're going to try to answer this question and close this case. Hey fellow embroidery artists, the Embroidery Case Files is meant to be educational only. We want to show commercial errors in embroidery and how much people pay for these errors and how much you can improve your embroidery skills by not making these errors. We would like to raise the bar on embroidery and make it better. Let's go back and examine the stitches for this Embroidery Case File. So what's the history of this jacket, Don? Well. This is a very expensive leather jacket. I believe it's Danier. Danier. Yeah, nice, nice leather jacket. Very nice. Um, it was given to me um, by somebody I was working for, and they had it personalized with embroidery. Which is awesome. Which is awesome, uh, except for the embroidery is not so awesome. It is some of the worst that I've seen. So first of all, just as an opinion, this is a very expensive jacket. I don't even own a Danier leather. No, and it wasn't on sale when they were purchased. So. It's a lot of money. <laughs> yes, it's a very thick leather jacket. So I would say a leather jacket like this or any leather jacket, um, we ride Harley Davidson motorcycles. Would you ever embroider directly on leather? No. 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 I would never do it. Um, it's thick. It's hard to hoop. It's, you have to set up the embroidery a certain way to stitch. It has to be a certain size. Mm -hmm. It's also, if it messes up, you, you got to throw out your jacket. That's expensive. You should have thrown this one out, no offense. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Dawn has actually never worn it because I looked at it and I went, <gasps> We have no idea who did it, but I think they had a hard time doing it from what you heard. They broke a hoop. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens when you try to hoop something that you shouldn't be hooping. This is way too thick. I way would never put this on any of our machines. Never. Never. I would never embroider directly on something. Basically, if you someone brings you a leather jacket and says, can you embroider on it? And you agree... Unless you get them to sign a piece of paper, you are fully responsible for what you're doing and you have to replace it. And 10 minutes of, of embroidery is not worth replacing a $600 jacket. No. How many out there have learned that the hard way? Put your hands up. Yeah, because I know just about everyone has done it when they start out. Um, so, well, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So we've covered up the name. Of course, we're not here to embarrass anyone. Um a lot of problems with this a lot of problems uh, one being birds nesting and birds nesting happens when things shift and when your tension isn't correctly you would have to reset your tension to stitch on something like this because yeah. this is five times thicker this really thinks this, this gorgeous isn't, it's a winter leather jacket so it is extra thick. It's quite thick. I, really, I wouldn't even think I could hoop this at all. So with tension problems, this this is what happens here. Right at the end here, this is a bird's nest that they just left because it's a one-shot deal. That's I don't know how well you guys can see that. I'll take some pictures. That is hard as a rock right there. That is really... Yeah. That is a bird's nest, and they left it because they had no other choice. Now, you can't even read the writing, so that's the first problem, because leather is a different material. You have to digitize differently for, for leather. Again, I wouldn't do it. But you can't read the writing. And in this light, you can really see that it's cut the leather. That's the real problem with doing leather. It's the needle penetration. So it doesn't heal up. It doesn't move. It doesn't anything. So if you put 10, you know, needle penetrations, which is what this is, this is satin stitches that are too thin, by the way. 
um, it's going to cut it out. That's it did. it's perforate it and cut it out. It I don't know what happened on the P. This is a P right here. Let's look at the back. I don't know what happened bird's to it. Nest. Uh, another bird's nest. So another thing we can say by looking at the back of it, okay, they did use cutaway, but they cut in between meticulously for some unknown reason. I would have loved it. You just leave yeah. it and you cut around the whole embroidery. This isn't done in two hoopings. This is one hooping. So why bother cutting this? It's too close. You need to leave, you know, a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not that important because it's on leather, but... What else, you pointed this out, what else do you see? Um, we don't see any bobbin thread. That's that's a that, clue. That is all your top thread. So there's a tension problem. There's a tension problem, which would cause the bird nesting. Which would cause the bird nesting. So that's a giveaway. You can't see any of the bobbin thread. When you do an eye test, you're, you're supposed to see one third of yeah. the bobbin thread. So yeah. there should be white in the back, and there isn't. Now, I would say, oh, maybe she used the same color thread and whatever, but she didn't because on this side, you can see bobbin thread, so we know. Um, you need to use, unless you're doing something specific like FSL, you need to use a different color bobbin thread so you can see about your tension. Now, a lot of people think when you're embroidering um, that your tension will always remain the same, and that is also incorrect. You have to... If you get a little piece of fluff in between the tensioners, and it doesn't matter if it's a single needle or a multi-needle, that is going to change your tension. If you're working on thin cotton with a little bit of cutaway, and you switch to a leather jacket, y'all are going to have to change your tension. Because this has way more to go through. Look at how thick this is. So, tension problem. Hooping problem. I wouldn't have done it in a million years. The other problem is with hooping something like this, it's there's a liner on it. And you have to get the liner to match up. And this was not done correctly. So this will pull on it because the liner wasn't lined up properly. You see what I mean? There's way too much liner material. Okay. Yeah. You have to have that even. So, you know, to wear this jacket, you would feel the pull of that. And that's I don't think that's a good idea. So tension, big, huge deal. Tension. Embroidering directly on leather, big, big deal. huge deal. Um, not doing the lining part properly. You have to, you know, get it so it fits properly. Um, yeah. That's a big problem. It is not even readable, not even remotely. I, I'll do close-ups of this, but I can't tell what it says. This is way too thin. This is down to... It's so thin, it is down to a running stitch. I don't even see the over satin stitches. I'll take a good picture of that. On, on some of it, no, you don't. You don't even see it. Way thin, super dangerous, like we said, on leather because... Uh, but then look at how thick this pea is. I think this pea had a bird nest, and I think they went over it twice. I think so, too. That's And then, wow, did that cause some problems. So that's just one side. How about we go to the other side? Side two. And side two. Um, again, they used stabilizer. They cut it really carefully and really closely. And you can see, let's poke it up here. There is bobbin. There is bobbin. Uh, but on this one, there's way too much bobbin. It's all bobbin. But you don't need to be that meticulous about cutting. You're just affecting your embroidery. Quarter of an inch go around. It's the so, backside. Nobody sees it. Nobody sees it. So this actually <laughs> says Don Brown. I know it's upside down for you guys, but it says Don Brown. And um, we're out of registration. Yeah. The underlay, which I wouldn't even think you would need on leather. I don't think. I think this is thick enough. Again, I just wouldn't do it. The underlay is showing through. It's way too thin. Because it is down to the running stitches again. Um, th this okay. thing, yeah, and if you can see, let's see if we can show it. I'll take a better picture, I guess. But it's all bumpy and bowed out because it is way too dense for stitching on leather. And th this will happen with any material. If yeah. you have a density problem, this is why I say test stitch out everything that you do um, before you stitch it on a $600 jacket. Um, because this is 
way too small. I don't know what they did because you, it, it's not too small for lettering. It's big enough. I think maybe they, they made like a, a stitch file smaller to have density like that. It's amazing yeah. how dense it is. Yeah. That would be the, so they didn't use ESA lettering. No. That's my guess. So they had a stitch use. file and then they just made the stitch file smaller. What do you think? Is that a good guess? That's probably a good guess, yeah. You gotta put that up so they can see. That that is my guess on it, because wow, the density is incredible on this. You can't even move it. Um no. this one isn't quite poked out as much, but you can see with the density, and I'll show this closer again, you can see on the letter B here that it's like the thread is breaking and it's kind of frayed looking yeah. which is not what satin stitches would do that is not how they should work and i think it's because the it's density dense. It's, there's sorry go ahead it's too thick yeah there's too many the density is way too thick on the satin like way, you, can, you can tell there's way too many threads in there there's there's layers be. of thread yeah. which if you're doing a, um embroidery on something so thick that's going to cause you so many <clears> issues <throat> I'm going to venture to say almost that it may have been gone over twice. Well, that's thing. a no, no, that's, that's, you should never go over it twice. I'm going to tell you, you Asking may be able for to, trouble. yeah, yeah. That's begging for trouble. You may be able to line it up, but you're still going to have density. If you're stitching it over it again, you're going to have twice as many stitches as you need. So stitching over something is not the answer. Using a really good ESA font is. Yep. Definitely is. You can have, I'm sure whoever did this was just kind of freaking out because it's so bad and they knew it, but they weren't going to do anything to fix it. So what are our solutions for this? First, I'm going to say do not stitch directly on leather jackets. I know you can do it. If you want to take on that responsibility, go right ahead. Personally, I would never do it. No, I would never do it. We have lots of leather jackets, and I would <clears throat> never do it. No. no. There's other ways to get embroidery on your uh, leather. Make a patch and sew it. Yep. You can uh, you can undo a couple of stitches to sew around. You're, you're still going to have needle penetrations. That's the thing that people forget. You can't just take this off, especially this one because it's so dense. If you have like a stitch eraser or whatever, people think, oh, I'll just take it off and do it again. Um, no. You can't because this is going to be all holes, it, and I it, would. I don't think there'd be anything left. It cut the leather like a knife. It would just be a big cutout. And the the holes don't go away. You can't steam it. No. You can't do anything. So anything you do on a leather jacket or leather or even um, I have some fake leather that's like that. It's going to leave those needle holes. So you can't you can't fix it. So it's a one time shot. It could be a really expensive mistake, don't you think? In this case, yeah. Yeah, and did you ever wear it? I, I did for a while, but once I realized about a little bit more about embroidery, um, kind of you can't read it. You can't read no. the company name. We've covered it up. You can't read this word is transport and Don Brown. You can hardly even see what it is. Yeah. So learn how to hoop. Um, learn when to say no. Just because someone wants you to <clears throat> do something doesn't mean that you should. If it's over your head and you don't want to do it, go with those instincts and don't do it. I see that all the time on Facebook. Somebody asked me to do this, this, and this, and I don't know if I should. That's your answer. Don't do it. If you don't know, then you shouldn't do it. Yeah, you can figure it out. You can learn, but you're also going to have to test stitch out and take the time to learn it. Learn how to do it before. Yeah, before you do it and test stitch out. Again, I would never touch a leather jacket with a 10-foot pole. But, so you can embroider on anything. You just have to know how to do it properly. Watch your density yep. is another thing. Don't resize stitch files. That's never going to work, especially on leather. Um, if you want professional level uh, lettering, use ESA fonts. Definitely. You can get them. There's like 600 of them out there. And... Uh, <laughs> They're fantastic. You would have much better results. You can resize them because mm -hmm. they're an actual font. You can resize them certain <clears throat> amounts. And I've never had any issues. And I've never heard of anybody having any issues with it. 
No, not that I'm aware of. Um, what else? Stitching over twice is never the answer. No. Never. Make sure your tension's set up properly so you don't have bird nest. If you see if you have bird nesting, fix it. Don't just keep stitching. You ruined it. If you have a bird nest, you pretty much ruined it. Especially leather. <laughs> um yes, and if you break a hoop, there's a problem. There's a problem. If you actually Well yeah, it's too heavy to be using on Yeah, and machine. that's that's your clue, right? Yeah. I mean, even we have tables for a couple of our machines that are built in, and they, I still don't think I would do it. No, I wouldn't. This it's is heavy. heavy. I worry about it's, the arms, wouldn't you? Yeah, because it's very heavy. The machine arms? Yeah. Like the and table would save the arms, but I, I, this is heavy for the table. I know I have magnetic hoops, um, mighty hoops, that would hoop this just fine. I still wouldn't. Do it. No, I just wouldn't. I I don't know. So there's, there's I guess some things that you just shouldn't do. Yeah, go with your instincts. If you don't want to do it, then don't. There's nothing wrong with saying no, or you know, learn how to do it. There's a lot of videos out there. This one, for example, um, that you can, you know, figure out how to do it and test stitch, test stitch, test stitch. That's the answer. Yep. So, sorry about your jacket. That's okay. It's a nice jacket and looks good on you. Uh, the only way we can fix it, you can't take the stitches out. The only way we could fix it to do, is to do some patches, but I don't think that the placement's off, and it is crooked, by the way, just so anybody knows. Um, it's it's crooked. <laughs> I wasn't even going to throw that in, but I bet you the company that did this was just not happy. And And please notice that because the customer didn't complain... They didn't replace the jacket. That was not part of it. Or they signed something saying, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the entire story, but it's just not good. Well, sorry about your jacket. I, I'm going to go ahead and close this case because yeah. I really think that home embroiderers can make much better decisions than this and go with their gut feel and, you know, not ruin a Danier leather jacket. Trying. It's my jacket. Oh, well, you can make your own patches. Or something I, I don't you can you can have it it's kind of terrible oh you don't even want to bag no, you got you it's have it terrible it's terrible anyways thanks everyone for watching uh i'm gonna stitch you later on this one and don's gonna go and wear his jacket just out of spite probably if you guys have any case files you want us to open send them over to us make a comment in the comment section either in a group or on this video don't forget to give us Two thumbs up, five thumbs up, nah, two thumbs up. Four. No, five, ten. I want lots so of thumbs up. So you only up. have two thumbs and I only have two. You can only click like once. Really. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more case files. Thanks everyone for watching. Stitch you later.